Today we're going to talk about power and electricity, and we've already talked about power in terms of energy, and the definition isn't going to change. The power is still the power. It's just we're going to try to do this in terms of electricity this time. So the power definition is the same. It is still the rate at which energy is used, in this case electrical energy. It's still the energy per second, and we're still going to use the same units of watts. So none of that will change, just like we did in the last unit. Now, when we look at power and electricity, we're going to have to make a few minor adjustments because we're no longer measuring the energy and the time, right? We're measuring other things. So what are those other things? Well, instead of measuring the pure energy E, we're measuring the potential difference or the energy per Coulomb. The reason we're doing this is because pure energy will change, right? You turn on a light bulb, it starts using energy and the energy will constantly change. It will build. It's a changing value. Whereas the potential difference, the energy per Coulomb doesn't change. As long as that circuit is left unchanged, it will keep having the same potential difference. That makes it much easier to work with. We also are measuring the current and that's the coulombs per second. This gets time into it, right? Because of the per second part. And it's not plain old time. The problem with time is, is that uh, it's, you know, depends how long you have the circuit on, right? So that is also an issue. When we look at this, that means that we can take the potential difference, the volts, and multiply by the current, the amps, and you will find the power. So why does this equation work? Well, if we look at the actual definitions, it does make sense because the current or I is the coulombs per second. So we look at the coulombs per second and we're multiplying that by the potential difference or the energy. That's supposed to be a G and that's supposed to be a Y per Coulomb, right? And when we multiply those together, you'll notice you'll have a Coulomb on the top and a Coulomb on the bottom. If it's on the top and the bottom, they cancel and that will give you the energy per second, which is the actual definition of power. And that's why it works, right? The units can show you why this equation is so helpful. So we will be using this equation to find power when working with electricity. Now we're going to use this to find the cost of the electricity. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's because the cost of electricity is super important, right? You're going to someday be running an apartment or own a home, and you will be paying an electrical bill when you do that. And to understand that bill is pretty important. You will then understand your electrical use, maybe how you can reduce your use or be more efficient, and really just understand the bill itself. Now, the first thing we do is the electrical company, they care about how much energy you use each month, right? So what they'll do is rearrange that power equation and take the power times the time, and that will give you the amount of energy used within the month. Now, of course, they're going to make some adjustments to this, right? You're talking about large amounts of energy over a long period of time. You're talking about a whole month. They're not going to do that in seconds. They're not going to count from the second to the second over a whole month. That's crazy. Instead, they're going to use hours because counting the number of hours over a month is reasonable. Also, instead of using watts, they're going to use kilowatts, right? Thousands of watts. Again, for the same reason. If they went down to the single little watt, you're not even going to pay a penny for a watt. It's a fraction of a penny. So it's not worth their time. So they count in kilowatts instead of watts. This means you can't use joules for energy anymore because joules will be based on watts and seconds. Instead, we're going to use a new unit. And that unit is just based on the fact we're using hours and kilowatts. So they call it a kilowatt hour. You will notice they put a little dot in there to show it's kilowatt and then hours to show they're two different things and uh, helps you kind of think about pronouncing them separately, kilowatt hours, right, as two things. Uh, and the company then bills you according to the kilowatt hours used based on the number of hours within that month from bill to bill and the kilowatts you used during that time. So how does this work? Well, We'll do an example. We'll work our way through one numerically. And it's not difficult. The first thing we need to do is figure out how many kilowatts we're using. How many kilowatts we're using? Well, we know the 
current, right? And we know the voltage. So that means that we can, the first step is to find the amount of uh, power used. And we're going to do this in kilowatt hours, right? So we're going to start by finding the power is the current times the voltage. This will give us the amount of power being used by this particular object. We're just going to find out the cost of operating an oven, one appliance in your home. So we're going to take 25, the current, multiply by 240, the standard rating on all electrical stoves, and I will get a value. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to find it's 6,000. Now this will just be watts, right? We haven't converted it yet, but I want it as kilowatts, right? Because they're going to charge me in kilowatt hours, I want this to be in kilowatts. So that will be six kilowatts. Remember, a thousand watts for every kilowatt. Not too crazy. Now I know this, I want to know what is the energy used. And I need that energy use in kilowatt hours. Now I know the kilowatts, and it tells me I'm operating the oven for three hours. So not a huge guess as what I might do, right? This, I'm going to use my energy equation and use my old fashioned power equation, but rearranged, right? We said we rearranged this. So the energy that I use to run my oven is six kilowatts. Don't forget to use the adjusted kilowatt times the three hours they said they used in the question. And this will give me the kilowatt hours or 18 kilowatt hours. That will give me how much energy I used overall. Finally, what I need to do, well, I need to determine the cost, right? So how much is this actually costing me? I know I've run it for 18 kilowatt hours of energy and it tells me it's 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So the cost will be the energy used times the price for that energy. And it says I used 18 kilowatt hours, right? That's what I found. It tells me, remember up here, 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour. So times 8.5 cents per kilowatt hour, that will give me uh, 153, and that will be in cents. Now, usually we just change this to dollars because that makes more sense, right? And they're not going to bill you in so many cents. So we will just change that to 1.53 and use the dollar sign. Rounding, when it comes to this, we don't worry about sig figs because it's money. All money is rounded to two decimal places in dollars and cents. So that's how I would round it for my therefore sentence. This is the only time we ignore sig figs is because that's how they charge you, right, is in pennies. I hope this made sense. Please take the time to go through the note, write it down so that you understand it and have a good copy in your notes and try.